we had a good meeting. Uh, we talked about the, our, the priorities of our government. Um, you know, we have our mandate now uh, for this government, and we are looking at uh, bringing some of those mandate items to Ottawa to, to try and get some support for that. So we're looking at going down to Ottawa in the fall, hopefully in, in about October, and bringing those issues forward. So you know, we're looking for support for some of the big projects in the territory that are, are much needed. You know, we see what's going on with the water levels in the Mackenzie River and what they're experiencing up in the Sautu. So we're going to be looking for support to advance the Mackenzie Valley Highway. I think that there's a, a real sense of urgency now about that. So I'm hopeful we can get some support. Um, the Tulson Hydro project as well. We're looking at expanding green energy in the territory. Um, and, and these are all going to help the territory become more self-reliant as well. In addition, uh, there's clearly a need for, for housing, transitional housing. Um, and so we're going to be looking for some supports for that as well. So. I, we, this is, these are the kind of things we talked about, as well as climate change and the impacts of that. And so I'm always grateful when we get parliamentarians here so that we can speak about the North, let them know, because we're, we're far away from the rest of Canada. We're far away from Ottawa. And so part of my job is to really educate um, people from Southern Canada, educate parliamentarians about what's going on here in the territory. And so I'm so grateful that uh, the Jagmeet uh, is here today so that we could have those conversations. Thank you. Thanks so much. Uh, Honored to be here, and thank you for thank you for the uh, invitation, Premier Simpson, and thank you to your team and, and yourself for uh, having that really good conversation today. We chat we chatted about important priorities and how, as leader of the New Democratic Party, I can support the province and the territories across this country. This is very important for me. It's a it's a priority of mine. And to meet with uh, the Premier to talk about how we could advance priorities in the territory is something that for me is very important to do. So uh, an honor to do that. We spent a number of days here in the territory and we met with people in a town hall setting, met people in the farmer's market, which I got to say is probably one of the best in the country, an awesome farmer's market, and really got a sense of, of what's going on. This is our third summer in a, in a row to come out to the territory. So we're really investing in this, in this territory. We want people to know that you matter and I can see why people live in the north. It's a beautiful place, it's a special place. And I want you to know that I'm gonna to fight to make sure we support the priorities that are your priorities to make sure you can have a good life here. And some of the things that the Premier and I chatted about, making sure people have access to healthcare. And this is a fundamental thing. People should be able to get the care they need in their, in their homes, in their communities. And so this is something that we, we talked about. We wanna make sure people can find homes that are affordable. They can live in places uh, and folks that that choose to live in the North can find a place to live that's affordable. So building those affordable, good quality homes was another priority that, that we shared. And the economy, making sure people can afford to buy the groceries, buy their necessities. In the North, it's always been a challenge, but it's become even worse with, with recent increases in the cost of living. So we wanna make sure people can live in the North and afford their groceries and their necessities. We also want to make sure people are safe. And this is something that came up. Uh, Premier Simpson talked about safety and making sure people are safe in their community. And also the importance of addressing trauma. This is a real problem and a real challenge and something that we need to tackle. And the federal government has a really important role to play in, in making sure we tackle trauma. We really want to make sure people can live and thrive, not just get by, but get ahead in the North. And that's something that I'm, I'm committed to working together with the Premier to achieving. We need to make sure there's the investments in the infrastructure, to build that good quality of life. And that's something that I'm gonna fight for as well. So an honor to be here. Uh, I gotta thank the Premier again and the team, and I look forward to your questions. Thanks so much. Thank Yeah, the town hall, I would say the main focus was a lot of cost of living and healthcare also came up a lot too. People are concerned about not being able to get the care that they need. A lot of worry about for-profit healthcare coming into the north and how that means one, uh, a question about the quality of care. Whenever there's for-profit healthcare, some of the money is gonna go towards lining the pockets of a rich investor or a rich corporation. And that means money that's taken away from hiring a frontline staff member. So a frontline healthcare worker. So that's, that was a concern that came up. The cost of living, again and again, cost of housing, cost of groceries, uh, real concern about that. And I was really clear on one of the major drivers that's pushing up the cost of living is corporate greed. We see corporate grocery stores making record profits and people can't afford to buy the food that they need. We see cell phone and internet companies that are making massive profits and we are paying some of the highest fees in the world 
for our cell phone and internet. These are, these are again, corporate greed driven cost of living problems that have to be addressed by protecting consumers, stronger laws that keep prices down, that protect consumers, and take away power from greedy CEOs that are really ripping off people. And we've seen that very clearly with the bread price fixing. We know that large corporate grocery stores and bread producers colluded to jack up the price of bread. So this is a real threat to cost of living, and, and that's something we've got to tackle. The liberals have ignored it. Conservatives want to put fuel in the fire. They want to let corporations rip you off even more. We want to stop that. So that was something that came up in the, in the town hall. Well, Premier Simpson and I talked about, about climate change. As someone that's from Hay River knows the impacts of the extreme weather in a community that saw extreme flooding and extreme forest fires in the same year. So I know that Premier Simpson cares about climate change and the climate crisis that we're in, but also acknowledges that it's going to be different. And it's, this is, I guess, where the one size fit all again applies that the same approach doesn't apply to every part of the country. And so I'm very open to a different approach being taken in the territory, an approach that fits. While we still ultimately bring down our emissions, we have to find ways that we do that, that recognizes the uniqueness of each place. And so I'm open to an approach that acknowledges the differences of different territories and different provinces. And so that's something I'm very open to and alive to. Yeah, yeah. And, and so you know, my position um, is that if, if higher costs were what was going to move us to, to green energy, we would have been the first ones um, adopting green energy. But the, the situation in the north is different. The cost of living is already so high. There's not a lot of alternatives uh, to the fossil fuels that we're using. That being said, we need to do our part. We understand that. We see the forest fires. We see how uh, the environmental conditions. We see the floods that are happening. Uh, the north is warming many or multiple times faster than the rest of the world and even the rest of Canada. And so we understand fully that we need to do our part. What we're looking for is some recognition that we are different and that what might work in uh, some of the major centers in, in southern Canada doesn't work, don't work up here. Thank you. Yeah, and when I talk about a different approach, I'm really looking at uh, the approach towards the, the, the consumer, uh, people that don't have a real alternative. If you live in a community, the only way you can get around is with your truck, and there is no option for an electric vehicle, does it really make sense to put a lot of burden on that, on that person in that remote community that has no alternative? There is no public transit. There is no real use of electric vehicles. So looking at what fits with those communities, communities that rely on diesel fuel as their only way to, to generate electricity. We have to look at real alternatives for those communities and the same approach that works in southern part of the country may not apply in the northern part. So that's what I'm talking about. But for big emitters, we need to make sure that we are putting in place plans that ensure that they pay their fair share and that we are ensuring that emissions do come down. So uh, I'm very open to looking at flexibility in the territory when it comes to individuals and to people and to communities and ensuring at the same time that big emitters are, are doing their part to keep the environment clean. 